But before we bring it up, we've got to talk about Judaizers. But what's the equivalent today, like a modern equivalent today of a Judaizer? And this is what we would call today a legalist. A legalist. If you look at any commentary, um, any sermon, um, I, I watched uh, John MacArthur and a bunch of different sermons on Galatians. Everybody deals with legalism because it is the modern equivalent of that. Because we don't have any Jewish folks in our church saying, oh, you guys need to be circumcised. You need to eat dietary, you know, you need to not eat pork. None of that. We don't have that today, for the most part, in our churches. But we do have legalists. We do have legalists. Legalism. Any doctrine which states that salvation comes strictly through adherence to the law or to a law. And we'll see this kind of stretched out a little bit as we go further. Um, Rabbi Nathan 4 5, this is an old text, a Jewish text. We'll see that this was already going on in 70 AD. I'm going to read it here. The temple is destroyed. We never witnessed its glory, but Rabbi Joshua did. And when he looked at the temple ruins one day, he burst into tears. Alas, for the place which atoned for the sins of the people of Israel lies in ruins. Then Rabbi Yohanan ben Zakkai spoke to him with these words. Be not grieved, my son. There is another way of gaining ritual atonement, even though the temple is destroyed. We must now gain ritual atonement through deeds of loving kindness. This was 70 AD. This is the temple is destroyed. Just imagine for the Christian in history, the temple being destroyed was the sign of signs that God had obliterated that whole entire system and replaced it with the system of grace. The Christian looked at the temple being destroyed as a sign that God was moving. What's up, brother? And it's important for us to understand that. But then the Jewish the Jewish folks looked at this and they said, okay, now we don't have anywhere to sacrifice. What do we do? We have to do works. That's the only thing we can do. So seeking atonement through deeds is as old as time itself. In the first century, one of the problems that Jesus was dealing with was the additions created by the Pharisees to protect others from breaking the law. They would add extra biblical rules to the law to stop people from breaking the law. But over time, these rules became a law unto themselves. So we're going to look at some of these here just real quick. And this is what we would today, we would call legalism. So the first one here we have, Matthew 15, 1 through 3. That says 1 through 6, but that's wrong. Uh, then the Pharisees, uh, Pharisees and scribes came to Jerusalem to Jesus and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? The tradition are these extra laws. Why do they break the tradition of the elders? And he says, For they don't wash their hands when they eat. And Jesus answered, and why do you break God's command? Because of your tradition. And then Jesus goes on to lay this argument out that their laws are actually breaking God's law. These traditions refer to the extra rule added by the rabbis to protect people from breaking the cleanliness laws. So there's a lot of cleanliness laws in Judaism. If you've ever read Deuteronomy or Leviticus, a lot of washing, a lot of washing yourself, which is a good idea because, let's be honest, we're pretty dirty sometimes. And what they would do is the, the rabbi said, okay, well, we have ritual cleanliness, but if we always wash before we eat, we can avoid all of the cleanliness because we'll already be clean. So they were saying, oh, well, let's do this because it makes sense. That'll be easier, so we'll already be clean anyway. So no one will ever get to the point of being ritually unclean. But the, the problem is, though, is that the Bible never says that. The Bible never says you have to wash your hands before you eat as if it's God's law. But they had taken it, they call it tradition, and they actually hold you accountable for not holding that tradition. And that's what these, these guys did. And it's not their fault. In the Mishnah, which is a commentary on the Bible, it says that the role of the leadership of the church, of God's, of God's church, is to do three things. Be diligent in judgment, raise up many disciples, and make a hedge around Torah. And I'll explain that a hedge around the Torah. 